Welcome to Time of Death. This video is for informational purposes and in no way meant to glorify or condone violence. In today's video, we'll be discussing the murder of Daryl Dwayne White. White was shot and killed on Wednesday, November 27, 2002, in the 1800 block of East Palmer Street in Compton, according to LA County Coroner Records. Joe Anthony Leon Toledo, Jose Ivo Enciso, and David Pelon Guerrero were subsequently arrested and charged with the murder. The following is the evidence at trial. Several street gangs claim overlapping territory in Compton, California, including Compton Barrio Setentas and Looters Park Pyro. Defendants are members of CV70. The victim and his cousin, Brandon Bulkhalter, were members of Natural Born Players, or MBP, a group associated with Looters Park. The CV70 and the Looters Park gangs maintain a long-standing feud. On the morning of November 27, 2002, the victim and bug halter spray painted MBP on some walls in a street sign at the intersection of San Vicente and Bradfield Avenues in Compton. The victim also painted over a graffiti referring to CV70. Defendants saw or learned of the victim and bug halter defacing a CV70 graffiti and hurriedly obtained a revolver from co defendant Guerrero at Guerrero's home. Defendants then approached the victim and bug halter in a blue Chevy Tahoe driven by co defendant Enciso. When Enciso flourished a chrome semi automatic handgun, the victim and bulk halter fled on foot. Defendants pursued in the Tahoe but temporarily lost sight of the MBP members. The victim and bulk halter ran to a friend's house and went inside, for a time thinking they had eluded defendants. But when the victim left the house to reconnoiter, he was seen by defendant and Mario Contreras, also a CV70 member. The victim ran into the backyard of a neighboring house, closely pursued on foot by defendant and Contreras. One of the pursuers shouted, Yeah, motherfucker, you think you got away, but I got you now. Defendant and Contreras took different routes to the backyard, cornered the victim, and shot him five times with a revolver and a semi-automatic, twice through the heart. Then they ran back to the Tahoe and were driven away. The victim died at the scene. The police investigation spanned several years. Months after the shooting, Danny Guerrero, co-defendant Guerrero's brother, was stopped in the vehicle in which a number of CV70 members were passengers. Under a seat occupied by one of the gang members was a semi-automatic handgun that was later determined to have ejected the shell casings recovered at the scene of the victim's shooting. Co-defendants Enciso and Guerrero were arrested on November 9, 2005. Defendant was arrested on January 31, 2006. On the day he was arrested, defendant gave an extensive statement to police about CV70 criminal activities, but not about the victim's murder. In 2006, Ms. Rodriguez, co-defendant Guerrero's girlfriend, was arrested for drug possession. She told police that on an unspecified day, an unidentified black guy got killed. She had been living with co-defendant Guerrero near the intersection of San Vicente and Bradfield. She was in the house with Guerrero while co-defendant Enciso, defendant, and Contreras were outside. Defendant rushed in and told Guerrero to give him a gun. Guerrero gave defendant a chrome revolver, then ran outside with him. She couldn't otherwise identify the gun. Ms. Rodriguez heard shots five minutes later. She was later told by a neighbor that a black man had been killed. In a later interview, Ms. Rodriguez told police that co defendant and Cecil drove a blue Tahoe owned by Danny Guerrero. Ms. Rodriguez recanted her statements at the preliminary hearing. Also in 2006, police detained Danny Guerrero as he emerged from the house of Ms. Lewis, his girlfriend, with duffel bags containing guns, clips, ammunition, and bulletproof vests. It was determined that three other guns had been used in other crimes. A search of Ms. Lewis's residence recovered a bulletproof vest, armor penetrating ammunition, a bag of inactive cell phones, and some preliminary hearing transcripts, one of which included Bug Halter's testimony in an unidentified case. Bulk Halter identified defendant and Contreras as the shooters and co-defendants in Ciso and Guerrero as the Tahoe's driver and passenger, respectively. Sheriff's Detective Hetch and Deputy Stainwan, the prosecution's gang experts, testified that a task force was created in 2005 or 2006 to solve crimes associated with CV70. Hetch testified that CV70's primary activities are robbery, illegal substance dealing, car theft, and murder. He testified there was a long-standing feud between CV70 and Looters Park, in furtherance of which numerous violent crimes were committed. Hedge testified that gangs demand respect and announce their geographical authority with graffiti. In the gang culture, crossing out a rival gang's graffiti is a sign of disrespect and requires retaliation. 
A gang member loses respect by failing to retaliate when the gang's authority is challenged. Hedge opined that the victim's murder benefited CV70 by increasing his reputation for violence and intimidating the community, and thereby discouraging community members from assisting law enforcement in its investigations of CV70 activities. Following the trial, the jury convicted defendants of first-degree murder and found true the gun and gang allegations. Defendants were sentenced to state prison for 50 years to life. Daryl Dwayne White was 19 years old at the time of death. 